Hey, New Hope family, just wanted to share with you uh, something that God has laid on my heart. Uh, quick history lesson, the Black Plague happened from 1348 to 1350, the Spanish flu, fast forwarding to 1918. Uh, combined, these things killed almost 300 million people, 250 million people. Um, how did the church respond during those times? Well, if you look and you can see all sorts of stories of the church not hunkering down, cowering in fear, but the church really stepping up and rising to the occasion and really the opportunity, um, if you will, that God had placed before them. A.W. Tozer says, a, a scared world needs a fearless church. And the church in those times really stepped up to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They reached out to people. Um, but also that living fearlessly doesn't mean living recklessly. And so they, even the, during the Spanish flu, when the government started shutting down things, the church complied with that. They said, okay, we, will, we won't meet in person, but we'll still pray. We're still going to reach out. We're still going to help the sick, the hurting, the homeless, uh, and the poor. And they were generous and they were fearless in that way. So they weren't living reckless, but they were living fearlessly and obedient. And we can do that today. We're called salt and light by Jesus. And we're, 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 we're called to be salt and light. And you think about being salt and light. Salt goes on dead meat. It goes on raw things to preserve, to make it better. It goes on dull things to make it tastier. You think of light is brightest and it comes into darkness and transforms darkness and fills it with light. And so salt and light aren't removed from darkness or dead things. They, in fact, are in the midst of them. And as Christians, we can be in the midst of what's going on around this with COVID-19. Yes, I'm not saying live recklessly, but live fearlessly that God has called us for such a time as this to be the church, to be salt and light. And, and really, I see this as an opportunity that God has given us as Christians to practice what we preach, to say, all right, I really believe in being generous. I believe in putting others before myself like Jesus would, reaching out, being supportive, being encouraging, being a hope dealer loving on people, loving my neighbor as myself. I've spoken and written notes and heard sermons and said those things and read those verses, but now's the time I get to live it out. And so I challenge you, myself included, that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus. That means, you know, whatever way the Holy Spirit's calling to you, not recklessly, but fearlessly, that, that we would utilize these opportunities. Who in your neighborhood is vulnerable that you can go pick up groceries for, not just pick up a buy. Who can you give toilet paper to? That's a comical thing, but it's a thing people are freaking out about right now. Who can you call on the phone if you need to practice social distancing and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. How can I pray for you? How can you post on your social media? Who can you text? Who can you reach out to? Who can you write a handwritten note saying, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. Anything that you need. Who can you take out the garbage for? Who can you pick something up for and, and hand it in, in, in a way? Who can you go knock on, not in a creepy way, and on somebody's window? And, and bring a sign that says, hey, I love you. I'm, how can I pray for you? Stuff like that. This is how we be the church. And in the darkest times is when the light of Jesus will shine the brightest and the hope of Jesus will shine brightest. And so I feel like God wants to use you for such a time as this. So take a moment and we're going to be praying for you and, and, and that God would lead you and the Holy Spirit would guide you to the right people, to the right things, to the right phone calls, to the right texts to the right posts, to whatever, to your right neighbor, uh, because God never wastes a season and he won't waste this season. So I pray that you won't waste this season that God has us in to do what he is calling us to do, be the hands and feet of Jesus. So let me pray for you. God, we thank you that you're in control, that we're not afraid, and we can truly live fearless because your perfect love casts out all fear. Thank you, God, that that doesn't mean that you're calling us to recklessness, but you give us wisdom to walk in these times, to reach out to people. I thank you that you've called us and commanded us to be uh, salt and light, to go into these places, to put others above ourselves. We, we pray, God, for courage. 
We pray for opportunity. We pray for initiative. We pray for creativity during this time. God, that we would be able to spread hope and spread you to our neighbors, to our enemies, to our family members, to our community. We thank you, God, that you're going to use us and you want to use us during this time. Give us boldness in your name. Amen. We love you, church. Excited to see how God is going to use you this week, this month.